RF man here. Today I want to talk about different methods for protecting LDMOS transistors that are used in various types of high frequency and very high frequency amplifiers. Um, example um, would be the BLF 188XR device from Amplion. And what I have here is a current sensing module that you can purchase on eBay. These cost about $15 or so. And they use this ASC 758 Hall Effect device to sense the current. So basically you have your positive voltage on this terminal, negative voltage on this terminal, current flows through the device, and then the sensitivity is basically for every amp you get a 40 millivolt output on the analog pin. So you can use that analog signal to trigger some type of protection device. So to set the threshold, I'm using this in conjunction with a comparator. So this just provides a DC voltage, but I have to have a way of setting the threshold so that I'm triggering this protection device at the right level. And for this demonstration, I'm using a relay, 30 amp relay, uh, to basically break the circuit uh, for the 50 volts. But uh, you can also use devices like, like uh, solid state relays or even a MOSFET transistor. So that's what I have here. This is a solid state relay. You could trigger this device or you could even trigger a MOSFET transistor to, to protect your transistor circuits. So basically what I'm going to be demonstrating here is I've got these 2000 watt loads and I've got two 50 volt power supplies up there in parallel and I'm going to set the normal current to around 33 amps or so so we'll be able to measure that here. And then by changing the position of this jumper, I can actually reduce the load and increase the current, and that should trigger our device. Okay, so right now we've got 56 volts. I've got a, a, about 1.8 ohm load. Each one of those is 0.9, so it gives me somewhere between 32 and 33 amps. And then we'll set the threshold so if we go one amp above that, it will go ahead and trigger the relay or any other protection device that you might have. So before I do that, I'm going to take a look at the, the specifications of this module and show you the schematic and then we'll do the demonstration. All right, so now I want to talk about the schematic. On one side of the module, you have two heavy screw terminals. This is to apply your DC voltage. So this would be for the plus side. This is for the minus side. And then on the other side of the module, you have a five pin terminal block. And pin one is used for five volts. So basically the circuit operates on five volts, the ASC 758 also operates on five volts. So you can use five volts directly. Pin two and pin five are ground. Pin three is VCC. So for VCC, you can use a DC voltage anywhere between eight and 35 volts. If you decide to do that, then you need to use the adjustment that's provided on the board. It's VR1, it's a multi-turn pot, and the onboard three terminal regulator. So I typically use 12 volts because I'm using 12 volts for my fans and my bias voltage. So if you decide to do that, just turn VR1 all the way counterclockwise. That'll be the minimum voltage. And then apply your VCC, whatever that voltage might be. Again, in my example, it's 12 volts. And then turn the multi-turn pot clockwise and measure the voltage on pin one. When you get to five volts, then it's set properly. That's the proper operating voltage. So it's a very simple procedure. And now pin four is your analog output. So remember what we said, 
we said that 40 millivolts is equal to one amp. So as your current increases for every one amp, the voltage is increased by 40 millivolts. Now you do have an output voltage of 2.5 volts, which is half VCC. So any additional voltage from the, from the current sensing will be added to the 2.5 volts. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when we demonstrate the circuit. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. And I'm just taking the analog output, pin four, and I'm using that with my comparator. So let me go ahead and switch over to the comparator circuit here. Get the right view. That looks pretty, pretty good. And for those of you that are not familiar with comparators, um, basically a comparator has two inputs and an output. Um, one of the inputs would be inverting, that's the one with the negative sign, the other is non-inverting, and then the output pin. So what I'm using here is just a simple voltage divider, and I've got a 12 volt Zener diode as a regulator. The reference voltage needs to be very stable, so I'm using the Zener diode to regulate the voltage and also a small filter capacitor. And then I just go ahead and I adjust the reference voltage here on pin two. And when the output from the module, which is applied to pin three, goes above that reference voltage, pin one goes high. And I use the high output from pin one to trigger this SCR. And the SCR in turn switches the relay, which is my protection device. Now the, the SCR, a silicone controlled rectifier, acts as a latch. So once it's triggered, you need to reduce the power or shut the power off completely for it to reset. And I designed it that way intentionally because typically if this does switch on and interrupt your 50 volts, that there's probably some type of fault in the system and you would need to go back and clear that fault before you continue to operate it. So it's designed that way intentionally to force you to shut the system down, to do some troubleshooting, and then power it back up for operation. So that's basically how the comparator circuit works. And we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate this now and show you how you can use it to protect your LDMOS transistors. All right, so here's my setup. Remember, I have two 50 amp switching power supplies running in parallel. I've got a current probe and digital multimeter to measure the actual current. And I'm using these two large loads to draw somewhere between 32 and 33 amps. And I'll be using this jumper to bypass a small section of the load resistor so that the resistance will drop and the current will increase. And that should go ahead and, and trigger our protection circuit. So let's go ahead and switch this on. You see I've got about 32.5 amps or so of current. I'm drawing a lot of power there, so I don't want to keep it on too long. Every time I switch it on, my lights blink. Okay, so at that normal level of current, we would have a certain output voltage on our module. So remember what I said, the normal output voltage, right, with no current is 2.5 volts, and then we're gonna have additional voltage added to that from the amount of current that we're sensing. So again, for every amp, we'll add 40 millivolts. Okay, so let's go ahead then and Switch, switch this on and see what we get when we have the current flowing through the circuit. So now here you can see I'm at 3.73 volts. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to set the reference voltage on the comparator to be slightly above that. And, and I've already preset this. 
So remember from the schematic that pin 2 is the reference voltage. So I'm going to go ahead and just measure on pin 2 here. And you can see that I'm measuring 3.79. So I'm slightly above the voltage from the module. Okay. So then we'll go ahead and we'll switch this on. Okay. And you can see the LED does not turn on. Now, if I just reduce the resistance slightly and increase the current slightly, you can see that it latches. Okay. And I figured out from watching the video that, that you might see a delay in the LED turning on, and that's just the frame rate of the camera. Um, it does turn on immediately, and the relay does latch immediately. Um, so you might hear the relay before you actually see the, the LED light turn on. And again, that's just the slower frame rate from the camera. So now what did we say? We have to go ahead and switch off the 12 volts. Okay, the circuit resets. We turn it back on, okay, and now we turn on normal current level on, okay, current increases slightly, and it latches. Okay, so that's the demonstration. It's, it's pretty straightforward. We're using the current module to sense the current. We take the analog output signal, use that as an input signal to our comparator, and then the comparator triggers an SCR, and the SCR in turn triggers the protection device, which in this case is a relay. So I hope you found that helpful. I'm going to go ahead and put the URL for the module in the description of the video, and if you're interested in any of the technical documentation or schematic for the comparator, you can go ahead and contact me. Okay, thank you very much, RF Man.